Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dovetail Box series. Today we're going to be focusing on one of the most important parts of the project, which is avoiding this thing looking like a big wooden cloud once we're done. We're focusing on sanding today, let's get going. Now I am very passionate about getting this stage correct because one thing that I hate seeing on stuff like this is, you know, you've got this lovely square joinery and lovely crisp edges on the mitres and everything looks super precise. And then people come along and they just scrub away at it with their lovely 120 grit and round off all those corners. They lose that perfect 45 degrees on the mitres because they've rounded off all the corners on that. The mitres are rounded off, which then exposes end grain and just looks a bit naff. It's so easy to just knacker all of the work that you've put so much effort into up until this point, just with a measly bit of sandpaper if you're not careful. So that's why I wanted to focus an entire episode on this today. I wanna make sure that we get this right. And a little disclaimer here, I'm not saying that I want you to leave super sharp 90 degree corners all over this box that slice your hands up every time you try and open it up to put in your, I don't know, biscuits, whatever you're gonna put in this. I'm not saying I want you to leave those sharp corners. What I'm saying is I don't want you to completely scrub them away so that there is no corner left. What we're gonna be trying to do is find a balancing point between something that feels nice to touch, but also when you look at it, looks like that's still sort of a hard 90 degree corner. But before we get stuck into any of that sanding, we've got a few areas to address first. The excess material left over above the lid, which we need to plane down to be flush. You could leave it oversized like this if you want, but I'm gonna bring it down so that it's a consistent level across the top of the box. And also I'm gonna flush off the bottom mitres because there's a few steps on here. It's not that they're rocking or anything, but when you pick it up and you feel that there's a small step there, it's not brilliant. So. We're gonna focus on those and then just clean up a few other areas as well. For example, it looks like the lid is slightly overhanging here and also, yeah, a little bit there as well. We're just gonna clean up these areas with the plane, get everything level, and then we'll start moving on to the sanding. So first I am going to focus on the bottom of the box, I reckon, and get this area flush because I can rest it on this excess material. And even if that gets scratched up or chipped, we're gonna plane it down to match the height of the box anyway. So we'll go for a very light cut with this. Bring it down so there are no steps at all. And you can see that the plane is not cutting in the majority of these areas, and that's because we've got some high spots dotted around here. What it doesn't mean is you need to bring the blade out more. Keep it at this depth and just work on removing those high spots until you're able to take a shaving over the whole thing. Next, let's get the lid flushed down. So get that securely mounted in there. And when you're planing, I would recommend holding the plane at 45 degrees like this while pushing it forward so that when you get down to the depth of the lid, it's going to do a sheer cut across that material. If you go on straight like this, it's going to work lovely on here. But once you catch the material on the lid, you're then planing horizontally across the grain and it's going to give a pretty bad finish. So if you shear cut it, once it hits the lid, it should be all right, providing the depth of cut is nice and shallow, obviously. And then next, a few passes on this excess material that I can feel on the lid. Being careful not to go off the opposite edge again in case I catch that end grain. Okay, so everything is flushed off with the plane and all we've got to do now is sand it. So I've got a non-slip mat here and when you do this sanding, Try and do it systematically. Go over the entire box with one grit and then work up to the next grit. Don't do like one face and 120, 180, and then go back to this with 120 and then 180. Like you just get confused with it. Also, another thing that I like to do with stuff like this is work the different components from bottom to top. So with the lid, we'll focus on the base first, get the rebates all cleaned out, and then we'll do the top afterwards. Not only does this help in terms of being systematic, but by scrubbing this face first and then flipping it over and cleaning up this face. If for whatever reason there was, I don't know, hard bits on this non-slip mat that started scratching up the underside, at least the top is gonna to be the final area that was cleaned up. Whereas if you do the top first and then finish up on the bottom, while you're scrubbing away at this, it might be scratching away at the surface that's gonna be on show once the box is finished. It's a little thing, probably not worth overthinking like I do, but 
it like you might as well. So I'm gonna start on the base of the box to start with and I'll get myself some 120 grit. Now when choosing a sanding block for this, I would recommend going for something hard like solid wood, plywood, whatever. Avoid going for something with a soft base on it or even a cork block, for example. Blocks like that are great for working on large flat surfaces, so they'll be ideal for this lid because that soft face and the soft face found on a cork block will follow any contours on there that won't be visible by eye but will take a long time to get to the bottom of when you're working with a hard block like this that doesn't flex. However, that soft base works against you when you're working on thin edges like this because to some extent it will wrap around those edges and you'll get sort of a bit of a rounded edge on them, particularly on the plinth, especially that mitre, and also on any of these top edges and the little finger pull that we've tried so hard to retain those nice corners. So pick a block that is suitable to the task. A soft one is great for large flat surfaces. A harder one is great for thin edges where you don't want to round the corners. So the plywood's already been sanded from where we pre-sanded it before screwing it to the base of the box. So I've only got to do these top faces and then I'll work my way round to the top edges here. Don't worry too much about taking off the corners for now. We'll do that at the end with a fine grit sandpaper once all the faces have been sanded down. So long controlled strokes of this. Don't start scrubbing away because that is what's gonna cause this to start tipping. Long deliberate strokes with the sandpaper. And while working with this coarse sandpaper, you will start getting perpendicular scratches on the opposite side of the mitre that's running horizontal to the vertical face you're working on. To get rid of those horizontal scratches and make sure that those mitres are nice and clean, do circular motions with the sandpaper. And this basically mimics the action of a random orbit sander, or this is how a random orbit sander works. By doing random orbits with the sandpaper, it's going to prevent any scratch marks from being too prominent on the corners and will get even less visible once we start working to the final grits. And actually on that note, don't try and use a random orbit sander to sand faces like this, because again, it's gonna tip, you're gonna lose the edges on it. Do these narrow edges by hand where you get maximum control. All right, so the base is done. Now we can start working on the vertical edges of the plinth. So I'm gonna get this upright in the vise. Still using the hard block for this. And keep in mind that the edge we're working on now is very narrow, which not only means that this is more liable to tip, but we're also going to be removing material much quicker with this. So be careful while working with the coarse grits. Place your block onto the plinth and rock it until you feel it sit level. Lock your arms and then carefully carry it through. And now the mitre, I'm gonna use the side of the block to do this so that I limit how much of the sandpaper is hitting the surface. So I'll put it on there like that, rock it over until I see it sit flat on the mitre, and then carefully push that through. Okay, and now I've got the top edge of the plinth, and while I'm doing that, I might as well hit the sides of the box as well. You can see there's a little bit of yellowing from glue here. So I make sure I've got a 90 degree corner of the block to work with and then just ram that into that corner while I am sanding it. That looks the best. Put a nice fold across this sandpaper so it'll really get into that corner. Okay, and then a quick skim over all these top edges. We will leave the finger pull for now because that is sanded to 180 grit and just needs a quick going over with 240. So be careful not to hit that. And then these top edges we sanded to about 180 beforehand as well. So we'll give those probably a once over with 180 again when we get to that grit and then follow it up with 240 just afterwards. But those feel okay for now. So next we move on to the lid. As I said, start on the underside. Always make sure that you're sanding with the grain and I'm going to swap to my softer block for this. However, as I get closer to the rebates here, I'm probably gonna finish it up with the hard block to ensure that I don't start rounding them. Okay, and now we'll get into the rebates. I'm gonna give myself a nice 90 degree fold in the sandpaper again, find the 90 degree edge on the block, pop that into there, and then carefully rock it until you feel it locate into the corner of the rebate. And just a couple of strokes here. 
And this, as I was explaining earlier, may be the difference between this lid being a interference fit like it was beforehand, being a perfect fit, like hopefully it will be now. Just do a couple of skims on the end grain now. And let's have a look. Oh, it's a lot better. It's just binding on one corner there by the looks of it, just on these two. Flip it around, see if it's doing the same. Yeah, so it's binding on the same two corners like that. So we'll get the block located in there. Quick swipe at that back edge, and then probably on this one as well. And chances are those will still be somewhat of a uh, snug fit. Well, it's not even snug, it's just catching slightly. Chances are that won't have sorted them out just yet, but we've still got 180 grit and 240 grit to get through before double checking that fit. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. We'll do the top of the lid. Let's get the soft block for this again. And obviously normally I would wear a mask for this, but I'm trying to present over it. Definitely get a mask when you're doing this. Okay, so that is the box sanded to 120 grit all over. Now, we've got to repeat that process from the base of the box all the way to the top of the lid in 180 grit this time. I'm not gonna talk you through it again, don't worry. We'll just time lapse it for now. go 180 grit has just loosened that off enough so that it is now lovely to use okay so now it's time for 240 grit the third and final grade that we need to go through if you're making this box out of an open grain timber oak ash elm anything like that where the texture is quite coarse to be honest you could probably get away with stopping at 180 grit taking it to 240 isn't going to make much of a difference however if you're working with a close grain timber such as poplar, maple, walnut might be worth doing, and timbers that feel generally smooth to touch, I would recommend going up to 240 grit. For Rob in his student series that he's running alongside this project, he is making it out of Paduk, and to be honest, he could probably stop at 180 grit, but I'm gonna say to him, take it up to 240 grit, just because he might as well. However, Paduk has got a fairly open-ish grain, so he could probably get away with 180 grit, but 240 grit, I'm gonna make him do that, I reckon. So third and final time lapse. So when you're going through this final grit, just make sure that you are removing all of the scratch marks from the previous grit. And that's referring to jumping from 120 to 180 grit. Make sure you're scrubbing away all the 120 grit marks with the 180 grit sandpaper, and then vice versa with the 240 grit. Make sure that this is scrubbing away all the 180 grit marks using this. You need to make sure you focus on that while working through the grits because removing 120 grit marks using 240 grit is going to take quite a lot of um, scrubbing and you're going to go through quite a lot of sandpaper and to be honest it's completely needless. As you go through the grits you will see the timber kind of going more of a vibrant rich color as opposed to what it would look like if you've got a 120 grit finish on it. 120 usually makes the timber look a bit pale and as you start scrubbing away with your 180 and your 240, that's where you start seeing the color of the timber pop through. So keep an eye on that. Corners are usually the area that you need to go over most because the middle tends to get a lot of scrubbing as you're going along it and then flipping it round. You're pretty much always in contact with the middle, whereas the corners sort of lack a bit on that. So focus on those and you should be fine and dandy. Right, see you on the other side. So now for the finger pull, I'm using the same dog that I used before and I pop it in there, feel it rest on the angle and then carefully scrub away that material. Just looking to remove the marks left by the 180 grit in the previous episode and nothing, nothing more than that.
Okay, so the box is sanded to 240 grit all over and the finger pull has also been dressed up to the same grade. Now, it is time to take off all of these corners and you know, this is up to personal preference. I don't wanna make it sound like I'm all against rounding off corners and things. If you would prefer to make things more rounded than I'm gonna do in this video, then feel free. But this is just down to my personal preference, keeping those corners looking square while also being nice to touch. I achieve this by only taking the corners off using 240 grit. Anything coarser than that, I find that it just takes off that little bit too much material and it just doesn't look too right. Whereas this takes off that very fine corner and when you touch it, it still feels nice and soft. So once again, I'm gonna do this as systematically as possible. Start on the base of the box. First thing we've got is this internal corner here. Now this is going to be difficult to get access to with the sandpaper, but we could just get in there. Also the fact that you're going into a corner makes it quite difficult to get to that stuff at the very end there. This is exactly why we pre-rounded these internal corners because getting in there, as you can see in this instance, is a bit of a pain. Really, I should have done it under here before sticking on the um, plinth, but never mind, it's the base of the box. Hardly anyone's gonna touch this bit. So I'm gonna get the sandpaper flush with the end of the block, angle it in there, and then carefully remove that corner. Light pressure. You see, I'm just doing a couple of strokes in each location, and that'll be all that needs. Okay, and now the outsides. So I get the block on there at 45, and then just a long, Careful stroke, a couple of times, maybe three or four should do. And make sure to use all the sandpaper because this does start digging into it and um, makes it stop cutting effectively. And then we've got these top corners here. So I'm gonna rest it on there at 45. And because this is a very small amount of surface area, if we do an entire stroke with this, it's gonna take a huge chamfer on that. So I'm gonna rest it on there and just couple of times, do it by eye. Cool, that's all that's needed there. Okay, so working our way up, the actual mitre on the plinth feels okay. However, on that corner, there's something that feels, like, it's not sharp, but you can feel where that transition is. There's a little bit of fluffiness or something like that. So I'm gonna do just a tiny lightweight stroke with this. It's going to take off the absolute point of that, but you can still easily see that there's a chamfer there without rounding it off too much. Same again on this top edge. Hopefully you can see how little pressure I'm putting on this and that gives it an absolutely wonderful feel now. Okay, working our way up again. We've got these long corners now, so gonna get it on there at 45 degrees and try not to go across the grain like this. Try and work with the grain. Once again, a few light strokes because this is a very small amount of surface area we're working on here so it won't take much to create that chamfer and to be honest a lot of this i'm not doing it by the number of strokes i'm actually just doing it by eye like does that look like there's a chamfer there a very small one does it feel sharp no it doesn't that's good enough to be honest he says while just doing a couple more <laughs> All right, so internal corners and stuff have already been at chamfered, so that's fine. We've just got these top edges to do now. Okay, so those top long edges are done. We've then got the front short ones to do here. So once again, rested on there at 45. And then finally on here, I've got these front internal corners to do. And these are gonna be quite difficult to get access to, but I wanna sand these in a way that doesn't start scratching this top surface. So I'm not gonna wrap the sandpaper around the bottom of the block and work like that. I'm gonna get it so it is flush with the base. Let's do it about there. Flush with the base of the block, rest the block on the side like that, and then carefully take out that internal corner. Okay, so all the corners have now been chamfered and this is just where you've got to feel it and work out where you want to take a little bit more from. So these corners do feel slightly sharp still. I'm not entirely sure on that. So for bits like that, 
I'm just going to rip off a bit of sandpaper and carefully take off those very corners. Feels a lot better and this internal corner does feel a little bit ragged as well. So actually I'm just going to go over that with my finger and that's going to put a very small round over on it. But seeing as this is an area where the user is potentially going to interact with much like these internal corners, I might as well make that as soft as possible. Just got to be careful not to make it too much so that when the lid is put on, you get this huge shadow gap caused by the round over. So let's just keep checking all the way around. Those corners feel absolutely spot on. Front edge, oh, I'm going to give that a little bit as well. The plinth feels okay. I don't need to do anything more than that, especially along these long edges. They feel lovely. Yeah, that's all fine. That's all fine. So moving on to the lid, I'm going to avoid going across the long edges like that because that is going to put some horizontal scratch marks on this instead. Just do that. Lovely. Top corners. And then inside the rebate, so I'm going to do this internal wall very lightly. And then this front edge, you've got to be careful about this because if you take off too much there, then that is going to create a weird shadow between the lid and the box. So again, very minimal amount here, but we want it to be enough so that when the lid is taken off, it's not too uncomfortable. Front corners. And then I've got these internal edges off the rebate as well. There's a lot of corners you've got to focus on here. And once again, just give that sort of a general feel around. Is there anything that you need to take off? Sharp corner there. I'm going to just give that a quick once over. Probably all these corners need a bit of a skim. Beautiful. Very nice indeed. Very nice. And there you go. That is how you sand the box to retain detail, yet feel lovely to pick up. It, oh, it makes such a difference when you do this job properly. Seriously, take your time with this. Go for 240 grit and it feels great and it also looks pretty good as well. So that is it for this lesson. Best of luck with it. You're now ready to move on to the next one where we will be finishing. So you can watch that video by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, come on, we're proper late in the series. Please subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left hand side of the video. I'll see you in the next one.